Hey everyone, this is uh, Dr. Shani Gonzalez again from Dr. G's Toothpicks and I am just going to go over a little bit how to use the CareStream 3D Viewer. I'm really only going over how to use one of the tabs right now. I'll probably add and do the other tabs in a little bit, but until then, I'm just going to start with this curved slicing because this is actually where I had a question about and just so you guys can see, I'm going to turn this a little bit. Curve slicing is kind of the second one from the right up at the top here. So if you look here, and I'm going to try to see if I can get in closer to the top left view right here, which is an axial view, you'll see this red line here. That red line is the software's attempt to draw the arch, which if you can tell, doesn't really match up very well. So in order to say draw your own line, uh, first thing is is that you notice this is really thin. This is just a single slice. If you look up in the top right, you'll see a number and it says set integration. You click on that, go somewhere around like the 20 millimeter. This gives you a little bit more thickness of the jaw to work with when you're drawing your arch. And then when you want a new arch, you're gonna go over to the left, you're gonna look for the manually create an arch. Go ahead and click on that. It's gonna ask if you want to delete the previous arch or not. If you're unsure, just hit no, but I obviously do, so I'm gonna hit yes. And then what you do is it's gonna be a click, click, click through the center of your arch. I've got a mandible right here. And it will automatically, just to give you a heads up, start to curve around as you go around, so you don't need to click on every single tooth. And you'll notice over to the other side, it's kind of drying as I extend as a reconstructed pantomograph feel. Now when you get to the end, just double click and you'll see we have our reconstructed pantomograph view here. Now, if you notice though, it's really thin, just like a single slice type thin. Move this on over. And so if you're looking at this and you're wanting to get more of kind of a similar to a 2D type of an image, you'll go to the top of all of your options right above it. And again, it's that set integration. Click on that and go to about, I'd say at least 20, 20 millimeters or right around the 20 millimeters and what you're going to notice is now it starts to look a little bit more like a 2d pantomograph view that you're probably used to and if we go back over to our image on the top left our axial you'll now see outside of our line we've got a band here and that's like our focal trough essentially it's pulling all of this area in to make the image over here on the right so also just as a heads up when you're using this image primarily use it just really for counting the teeth you're not going to really want to use it to do most of your interpretations on cone beam CT. Now, what you'll also notice is, oops, down below that view is a cross-sectional view. And right now it defaults to just one by one. So if you look at your cross-sectional view and you go over here, we've got a couple different icons, find the one that says one by one. If you hold the mouse over it, it will say split view. Click on this and you'll see there's a lot of different options. Personally, I'm a fan of the one by five gives you five slices in a row and you can kind of see now up here that that center line is the center and then I've got all the way here and over here so if you like one by three you can do one by three too I'm just gonna go with the one by five just because that's just kind of what I prefer with your spacing here the software is going to try to default closest to a millimeter as it can based on whatever your scan size was so if you look just to the right of the one by five, you'll see set split spacing and it's set at 1.1. If I want, I can make it four and a half millimeters between each space, which if you notice now I have a larger area. I'm gonna go back though to the 1.1 because I want closest to a one millimeter spacing when I'm doing this. Now with your cross-sectional views here, if you are wanting to say find the nerve and try to trace the nerve, the easiest way I recommend you see the light blue half circle, get the mouse that has a double arrow, hold it down with a, you know, the left key on top, and then you can click and drag. And so what you can do is you can actually click and drag and find the mental frame and in your cross-sectional slices below. So if you look, we've got here is our mental frame. In. And again, you could do that on the other side, go through, and find your mental foramen. So what you're gonna do from here is over on the left, you will see a mandible with a little orange line through it that's for the nerve tool. 
So go ahead and you're going to click on that. And I come over and I'm going to come back to my cross-sectional views. And you can start by literally just clicking on one and then going to say another one and clicking there. You can click each slice you want to, or you can skip a couple. If you go through each one and you're wanting to move, the easiest way again is get that double arrow, and kind of move it further back. And then where you see the canal, or where you think you see the canal, hopefully you can see the canal. If you can't, it's always fun. You can go ahead again and just keep on clicking. Like I said, you can click every single one, or you can just skip a couple. It will automatically kind of trace them through. And so you kind of just keep going back as far as you need to, to cover the area that you're needing to go through. So I'll just kind of go back a little bit farther here. And just remember, this is only as good as you happen to actually see the canal. Not every single patient are you going to be able to see the canal. I'll go just a hair further because it looks like I'll be passing the edentulous area. And I'll go right there. And this is just like with the arch where if you get to the end here and you want to finish it off, just double click it. And there you go. We now have our canal drawn in so that you can see where you're at. And you can see the dots also and that's everywhere I was clicking. If for whatever reason you want to move something, you can just click on one of those dots and you can move it up or down if you weren't really happy. Uh, if you make a big mistake, realistically the easiest thing to do is probably just to redo the whole arch. And the easiest way to get rid of the arch is to go back over on the left and what you'll see is this says nerve canal and this is my one arch right here. And you would just click the trash can. Now another advantage you could do is if you like the arch but you just don't want to be staring at it when you're looking at everything else on the scan is it's got this little eyeball here and if you hold over it it'll see show or hide. And so as I click on it, pay attention to the arch up in the top right, it makes it just disappear. Now it's not completely gone, so if I click on it again, it will come back. So that's actually kind of a nice convenient little feature in the sense of it won't interfere with you going through the entire scan. So now, if for whatever reason you wanted to actually physically place the implant, not physically place, but place the implant on the software, what you could do is over on the left, you'll see implant icon. So now when you click the implant icon, it's going to give you some options. Now you'll notice there's only one implant in here because I just created one really quickly. <laughs> but what you could do is you can go ahead and click on manage library. And then here you could choose to add a manufacturer. You've got some options. So if you do a manufacturer, you can go ahead and click next. You can do all of these guys. I mean, there's a ton of them and we go all the way down to Zimmer. I would not recommend doing all of them at the same time because it's a huge file, like really massive file. So I'd say like maybe pick your first couple and then you would hit next and then it will start uploading it. I'm not going to do it right now because it takes way too long so I'm just going to hit cancel but that's just what you would do if you wanted to add specific libraries to your computer. So but what I will do is go ahead and go back over, click on the implant and I'm going to go ahead and pick this lovely implant that I made. Believe me, there's no rhyme or reason to my numbers. So I just picked it and go ahead and go for OK. And it's going to throw an implant in there. Now, you notice your implant will have kind of three dots. The middle dot, if you click on it, will physically move it around. So if it came in too low or anything like that, you can move it this way. The top dot and the bottom dot, when you click on it, will rotate. So if you want to get it a little bit more lined up. And then also, you can do the same thing kind of down here. Grab the middle one and you can move it and then you can also move it from the top or bottom if you want to rotate it. And again now that implant then is always there. Same as with the nerve canal. If you wanted to hide it, you just come over here and it's got that little eyeball again. You click on that, makes it go away, click on it and it comes back. And then also, not that you've used this other than probably for patient education, it kind of shows it a little bit in going through the 3D reconstruction, which is, like I said, more so for patient education. So that is the nitty gritty, <laughs> very short and quick way to use the curve slicing if you guys have this software. Um, it does take a lot of practice in the sense of just, you gotta get in there and just play around with it a lot. 
but don't worry, you can't screw up your data set. So I say go ahead and have fun 